Good afternoon everyone, you join me again on another lovely hot day to be honest with you I wish it wasn't quite so warm as I have a belly full of food I didn't get much sleep last night and it's boiling hot so all I want to do is sleep right now but I've been waiting to do this job all week and I'm quite excited to do it so I thought I'd push on and get it done so it might end up being quite a short video but then again I always say that and it always turns into an hour long thing doesn't it so <laughs> we'll see um, so last time you saw me glue my fretboard down to the neck blank and it went okay we had a few little hitches but I think we're gonna pull through just fine um, today I'd actually like to try and take the excess off the edge of the main run of the fretboard uh, to get it down to the usual width now most of the time when I've seen people do this I've, I've usually seen them actually plane down the neck um, but in that instance they tend not to have a one-piece headstock they tend to use wings um, my plan is to use the, the fretboard which has already been tapered um, as a kind of routing template um, so the idea is just going to be run the template router cutter along the edge of the fretboard basically and that should take off the neck to the right thickness um, we do have the new router to contend with I say new let me just move the camera Mac Allister 1500 watt COD 1500R router so it says and you know it's obviously been well used it doesn't have a lot of features that the the Triton router has but the chap that we kind of bought a lot of bulk tools off made this router table especially to go with it so I'm hoping that I can use it uh, to well do what I've just explained the only problems we're really gonna have is it doesn't have height adjustment that we can use through the table so you kind of have to set the height then drop the router back into the table which is a huge pain in the butt to be quite honest with you but never mind I might look into getting a, a router table plate that will actually fit the Triton router actually something else I've discovered while just kind of planning this job is one thing I didn't know Triton although they do two routers that I'm aware of there's like the 2400 watt one which is like a half inch router and then there's the slightly smaller I think it's about 1400 watt which has the quarter inch collet on it now that's the router that I have the quarter inch one but it looks online that you can actually buy the half inch collet and put it in the quarter inch router which I wish I'd done because that would be absolutely ideal for me so that that's something I might look into in the future but for the meantime I'm hoping to persevere with what I've got here so it's going to be fairly easy hopefully he says famous last words so one thing I've done quite intentionally so far is I've left the the bottom of the neck blank flat at both ends and that means that hopefully the fretboard should be a constant height from the ground as it stands at the moment let me just check that yeah. so the fretboards maybe just a tad below four centimeters off the ground at the moment and the same can be said all the way along um, the idea is actually normally I would probably put the workpiece this way down and we would have a bearing just above the height of the table and we would run the workpiece along that unfortunately I've only got the one router bearing for the quarter inch router and it's a top mounted bearing so we're actually going to try and run it through this way that does mean that I get the, get the feeling it might be a little bit more prone to tear out around the bottom but again that's just going to be on the corners of the neck which will ultimately be sanded off anyway so I think we'll be okay um, one option we do have is the table does have a fence as well so as we start to finesse and things we could consider setting the fence up to give us a little bit of a safety net but I think it really is just going to be a case of running along the edge of the fretboard and making sure we stop when we get to the end of the fretboard the headstock will probably be done on the router as well but I need to make up a template for that which I've not done yet so it's just going to be the fretboard itself 
for the time being. So as far as I can tell there's no fine adjust on this router. If it did have one, it doesn't have one now. Um, there's not much left of it unfortunately. Um, the bearing as we can see is on the top of the cutter. Now the fretboard is four to four and a half centimeters off the table but the router is mounted below the table and the thickness of the plate it's mounted to is approximately one centimeter. So by my reckoning that's about five and a quarter centimeters ish we want for the middle of that bearing. I'm going to have to just try and set it manually now and we'll see what we think it looks like. That actually looks to me like it needs to go just a smidgen deeper. So that looks like it's ready to rock to me. I'm going to have to be a little bit careful because if I was to go straight down the table I would fall off the end of the table but I think by rotating the workpiece around like that I'll be able to just stay within the within the limits of the table. Uh, before we do that though one thing I nearly always forget is I should take the bandsaw as close to the fretboard as possible just to trim off that excess that excess rather um, before we put it on the router. The last thing we want to do is be trying to take off half an inch on the router. That was scary. The blade was wanting to violently steer in all directions there. It did actually on the first attempt to cut there actually graze the edge of the fretboard just. Thankfully it didn't go too deep. Could do the other side now. Alright, let's do it.
so we're suffering the dreaded camera overheat again. So yeah, as I expected to be honest, I mean this is why palm wood's not really good to use. It's because it's just so prone to tear out. I mean the majority of what we see there will be carved off as part of the neck shaping process and I'm planning to do that by sanding basically just to minimize the tear out but there are definitely definitely going to be instances along here close to the fretboard that we're not going to be able to avoid putting some kind of filler in but not to worry I was expecting that it's still pretty cool to get something that's starting to look like a guitar neck going now yeah the rattle of the truss rod I wonder if that um, goes quiet if I just put a little bit of tension on the truss rod there. Yeah, it seems to be quiet now. Right, so where was I? Yes. So the only thing left to do really is to try and get the the neck tenon straight or should I say to get the sides of it flush at the very least. It's just going to make it much easier in the long run when it comes to getting the getting the neck pocket routed. One of the, the reasons I'm concentrating on the neck tenon is because ultimately a lot of this neck carving business is going to be a lot easier probably when I get set up with a vise and I don't have that at the moment so I'm trying to get back to the stage where I can work on the body. going a little bit gung-ho with my plane here just to try and straighten out that tenon and also the the fretboard I think is actually bulging a little bit here so I'm just trying to get it all flattened off at this end
And that's pretty good. Against all my best efforts, of course, I've ended up with the central strip not quite centered. At least not at the tenon end, it looks pretty good at the headstock end. But uh, I think that's pretty good. So it's been a fairly rough day, uh, the camera's been overheating loads. Um, so I'm going to have to quickly recap, I think, just in case we're missing any footage when I come to edit this. In short, we put the neck blank through the bandsaw just to take off any excess down the edges of the neck blank to bring it right in close to the edge of the fretboard. After that, we put the fretboard, the fretboard, we put the entire neck through the routing table um, using the fretboard itself as the guide for the template cutter. Um, as we suspected all along, the palm wood did not like going through the router table, there was a hell of a lot of tear out. Um, I don't think I managed to get on camera the fact that once I did that I have actually already patched up the worst of it with a little dust and glue, as always, the amount of dust and glue on this guitar is going to be quite quite high, but never mind. Um, but yeah, that's, that's about it, that's all we managed today. We brought in the neck tenon a little bit thinner than it was. Um, just to try and bring it in level with the end of the neck. I mean, the actual dimensions of the tenon itself don't really matter as long as we get it matching the neck pocket, really. Um, so that's about it. I think I'm going to have to go off and uh, maybe have a look at investing in the new camera moving forward. The last thing I really... I'd normally be quite excited about buying a new camera, but the last thing I really want to do is shell out a load of money right now, especially uh, for something that I'm going to bring into an environment as dusty as this, but never mind. So I think that's about it for now. Um, as always, please do like, subscribe, share. I think at time of recording, I'm one subscriber off 30, which would be a nice milestone to hit. And then I'm sure we'll try and move on for 100 after that. But yeah, it's been pretty good. Um, also, do look out. I am thinking about starting a series on how valve amplifiers work. Again, it's something that I'm pretty much an amateur at, but I, I have learned quite a lot over the past few months, so I'm keen to kind of pass on that knowledge in my own unique format. So do look out for that video coming out soon as well. Um, is that everything? I think that is everything. So until next time, goodbye.